Okay, so we have been through the photo viewer and we still need to go through the J panel. The photo viewer has already been written for you. All you have to do is download the zip file and uh, unzip it and import it into your Java workspace. <clears throat> the main thing to focus on is, is that in this action performed, which handles the actions on the button and uh, the, the J combo box, it calls different methods of this variable photo, and photo is an instance of photo panel. So it's, it's, uh, it's calling invert color, swap color, darken, lighten, make gray, rotate clockwise, and flip horizontal. So I want to go over and look at the photo panel code. Photo panel implement, or extends J panel. So, so anything that extends J panel can be placed on a J frame, and that's why we extended it, because photo viewer is a J frame. It extends J frame. That gives us a window. And then we create an instance of the photo panel and add it in onto the J frame. And so now we've got a, a panel where we can display an image and, and draw stuff. Um, we're going to give it a buffered, buffered image and we're going to open that image from a file. We've got a max size. When we open the file, we're going to scale that file to fit the J frame that it's on. And so that max size is going to be the maximum size that we can make our, um, our J panel. So when we create one, we just set max size and we don't do anything else. When we load an image, we're going to receive this file object. That file object is, was, was gotten from the file chooser. So it is a reference to the file that was chosen. If that equals null, okay, that means they may have hit cancel when they out of the, the file chooser box, then just return false. Don't try to load an image that isn't there. We create a temporary buffered image, and then we try to read that image. Read use an image image IO read. We give it the file. And if it succeeds, it will return a buffered image and assign it to temp. Now, it might fail. That file might um, be opened by something else, or, or it might have been deleted before we got to this point. Or it might not be an image file at all. It might, they may have selected a text file or, or something. We, we tried to limit that uh, file chooser to just image files, but that doesn't always uh, prevent people from choosing files that are not images. So, um, or an image that's uh, corrupt, whatever. Sometimes it fails, so if temp equals null, then just go ahead and quit. Then we calculate the aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is a ratio uh, of the width to the height. So we just take the width divided by the height. If that aspect ratio is greater than one, meaning the, the width was greater than the height, then we want to set the width to be the maximum size and the height is going to be the maximum size divided by the aspect ratio. Okay, that number that was a little bit bigger than one. So, um, so the height will be divided by something that's a little bit bigger than one, meaning it's going to be a little bit less than the maximum size. So we're creating this new buffered image that is the appropriate size. And if the aspect ratio is not bigger than 1, then the height is going to be equal to the math maximum size. And the width is going to be multiplied by the aspect ratio. So, so because the, so the uh, height, or I'm sorry, the width is going to be multiplied by something that is a little bit less than 1. And so this gives us something that is the appropriate shape and no bigger than the maximum size. So we take the graphics object of that new image. So, so we say myimage.getGraphics. That gives us the graphics object. That graphics object is like a paintbrush that allows us to paint onto that image. And then we say g.drawImage temp. 0, 0, my image width, my image height, 0, 0, temp width. So there's a bunch of parameters here, right? So we're going to draw the temporary image, the one that was open from the file. 
And this is the, um, the my image is the one that we created uh, from the buffered, new buffered image with the constructor. This one's blank at this point. This is the destination of where we're drawing to. The 0, 0 is the x and y, upper left-hand corner, and the my image width, my image height, is the lower right-hand corner of where we're drawing to. So we're basically filling up the entire destination image. And then this second set of four parameters is the 0, 0, the x and y, upper left-hand corner of the source object, and the lower right-hand corner of the source object, okay, temp width and temp height. So we're drawing one image on the other, and what, what Java is going to do is by, by giving it these parameters, we can scale the one image onto the other. It's going to make it a little smaller so that it fits under the J panel. And whenever we draw image, we have to pass it an image observer or null. In this case, null works. Um, and then we say this dot set size, max size, max size. That resizes the, uh, the J panel, or, or in our case, we call it a photo panel. And then return true. This return true just means that load image succeeded. It was successful. Paint component. So this is like our paint method that we've done in the past. The only thing we're going to do in paint component is we're going to take that image that we've loaded and scaled from the file and draw it onto the screen. So that's what g.drawImage my image 0, 0, null is. If we only pass it 0, 0 and don't give it source and destination, all these extra parameters, then it's just going to draw it full scale, full size, which, which is fine because it's already scaled to fit. Get pixel. This is what we used when we were uh, modifying the label. Um, this dot get mouse position, it gets the position of the mouse relative to the J panel. Okay. And if it fails, okay, so if the mouse isn't over the J panel at all, this, this uh, get mouse position is going to return null. So if it did return null, just go ahead and return zero. We, we can't get a pixel if the mouse isn't over the panel. And then be a little extra careful because sometimes it can be equal to the image width or the image height. And, and that's going to still be a little bit outside of bounds for us. So if, if p.x is less than zero or p.x is greater than e equal to image width, or y is less than 0, or y is greater than to equal to the height, just go ahead and return 0. We're not going to grab a pixel. But otherwise, my image that get RGB. So if we've got a buffered image, we can call get RGB, pass it x and y values, and it will grab a pixel from that image. A individual pixel has red, green, and blue colors, and a picture is just made up of a bunch of rows and columns of, of pixels. So this will return the individual pixel that the mouse happens to be hovered over as an int. Get mouse x. This is just the x coordinate of the mouse. This is how we get the x coordinate of the mouse. Get mouse y. This is how we get the y coordinate of the mouse. So all three of these methods were just written to help us when we were in the photo viewer and we wanted to change the label. So in the mouse moved, that's where we called get, get pixel, get mouse x, and get mouse y. And then we use that information to change the label. From the pixel, we grabbed the individual r, g, and b values. OK, so say this is our image. And each square represents a, a pixel. Each square is going to have a color. So say this is a color of an individual pixel. When we say photo.getPixel, if the mouse is over this particular pixel, then the color of that pixel is returned and assigned to the variable pixel as an int. And so that, 
that color is set up as a bunch of ones and zeros, red followed by green followed by blue, and so this is, this is the ones and zeros, this is those same things in hexadecimal, so A5 would be these ones and zeros, 55 would be those ones and zeros, and 57s would be these ones and zeros. And altogether, they make this reddish color because there's a little more red than any of the others. So if you assign those, all those ones and zeros to, to Pixel, Pixel has these numbers, these ones and zeros in it. So now if you take Pixel and 0x, ff, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then shift it by 16, what does that do? Well, the first part where it says pixel and 0x ff ff 0 0 0 0 0. The ff gives us eight ones, and the four zeros gives us 16 zeros, okay? And the and symbol says, okay, take and combine these together. And if this is a one and this is a one, then give us a 1 in the first spot. And if this next one is a 1 and this is a 1, then give us a 1 in that spot. So the result of this gives us a 1 whenever they're both 1s and a 0 whenever they're both zeros. Well, all of this, these second chunks, the green and blue chunks, will be set to 0. And the red chunk is going to stay the way it is. So pixel and 0, f, f, 0, 0, 0, 0 evaluates to, to something with just the red component. If you, am, if you and the pixel with 0, 0, f, f, you're going to get just the green component. And if you put all the zeros on the left and then the f, f, you're going to have just the blue component. When you left shift by 16 bits, Okay, that's what this symbol means. Left shift by 16 bits. It's going to shift them over so that all of those zeros end up on the left-hand side. And then the bits that you didn't eliminate or wipe out with this, and we call it a mask, end up in the, in the least significant position, which is exactly where we really want them. So that this is the ones place, this is the twos place, this is the fours place. And so then this number here will evaluate to A5, which in base 10 is really just the same thing as 165. And so this is just a way of isolating the red component. This is isolating the green component. And this is isolating the blue component. You'll notice that I just left shifted or right shifted by 0. Um, which is the same thing as doing nothing. So we could have just d deleted this part from the code, but I thought it was more legible if I right shifted by 16, 8, and 0. Um, so that's what that little bit of code does. This string format thing, that's, that's an old way of doing stuff. But essentially what it does is it ensures that each of these numbers that are in my red, green, and blue, and my x and my y, is going to be shown as three digits and it's going to be padded with spaces in front of it. And, and that keeps the, the label from uh, getting bigger and smaller as my, I move my mouse around on the, uh, on the screen. If you want to really understand that, just go ahead and delete the threes and run it again and, and see what happens on that label. And see that I think, in my opinion, it looks a little bit better if you put the threes in there and, and format your code this way. This just, all it does is instead of creating a string in the normal way, this percent %s says, oh, we're going to have some variable which is a string. And this string is going to be pasted right there where the percent %s is. And the percent %3d means, oh, we want a three-digit integer. And so the, the integer that's stored in the x is going to be formatted as a three-digit integer and pasted here. And then this percent %s gets the next string, and then this three, uh, percent %3d is the next three-digit integer, and so on. So this is going to be my x value, my y value, my red, my green, and my blue values in the label. 
So what I want you to do for your assignment is to implement these methods, the invert color, the swap colors, the darken, the lighten, the make gray, the rotate clockwise, and flip horizontal. And I'm going to Im implement invert color for you. It's a little bit tricky at first, but once you've got one of them, it's really not that hard, and it should take very little time at all. So what we essentially want to do is we want to go through every row and every column in our image and invert the colors. Okay, so this for loop, for y equals zero, y less than image height, in my image dot get height, y plus plus. And then inside of that for loop is another for loop, x equals zero, x less than my image dot get width, x plus plus. And then I'm going to get an individual pixel, my image dot get RGB, x, y. That's going to return an int pixel. And then this is that little bit of code that I explained just a moment ago that isolates the red, green, and blue values. Now, each of those values now are G and B is a number between 0 and 255. 255 is the biggest number you could store in 8 bits. And so all I've done is isolate 8 bits. So, so the biggest number that could possibly be is 255. So if I want to invert them, all I do is I take 255 and I minus the value that it already is. So if R is equal to 0, my new R is 255, so if there was very little red in it, now it's going to be fully red. And then green, if it was fully green, there won't be any green in it. And, if it, and blue, how, the more blue you have in the beginning, the less you will end up with in the end. And so this just inverts the amount of red, green, and blue. Once I've inter inverted the individual colors, I have to put them back together into a pixel. So I've got to take that red value, left shift it 16 because it was already right shifted 16. I've got to take the green and left shift it 8 because it was right shifted 8. And the blue I'm left shifting it nothing because it was right shifted nothing before. And just like I was using and with a mask, to, to pick them apart, I'm going to use OR to put them back together, except that I don't need a mask this time. So, so this is already going to have 16 zeros next to it. This is going to have 8 on either side. And this is going to have 16 zeros to the left of it. So the, the ones on this one don't line up with any of the ones on this one, don't line up with any of the ones on this one. This says if anything that's a one in this one, or this one, or this one, end up as a one in the final copy. So this just pastes your ones and zeros all back together into a single integer with red, green, and blue values. And then we have to set that value, that location, back to our new pixel color. And so my image dot set RGB sets it back to the new color. So now if we uh, run our program, we go to select transform, we go to invert colors, and it should invert the colors of our image. One thing, if you are noticing, if you're watching really closely, when I click on invert colors, it's only right away going to invert the, the things that are directly under my mouse. Um, that's, that's Java trying to be efficient. As soon as I move my mouse, it will then repaint the rest of the um, panel. I don't really like that. I want it to repaint the whole panel all at once. So I can force it to do a repaint. All I've got to do, I'm going to close this, is in this action performed, I'm going to add a repaint so that after it performs the invert colors, it's going to just repaint the whole screen. So now if I run it again, Select the invert colors of the whole thing inverted right away. Invert it twice and it goes back to the way it was before. I can change my image, invert the colors, and it flips everything. Notice that this is now yellow, right? What's, what's yellow? It's something with no blue in it. It's, it's red and green make yellow. So what I'd like you to do, uh, is implement each of these methods. Swap colors. So what you need to do for swap colors, put, 
put red, assign put red to green, green to blue, and blue to red. So it's very similar this to this, except that when you put them back together, you put them back together in a different order. Darken. So you're going to reduce the value of red, green, and blue. And a little hint there, multiply by something less than 1. Okay? Something uh, between 0 and 1. Probably close to 1, but not quite. Lighten. How are you going to lighten? The easiest way I know to lighten is to invert the colors darken and then invert them again. And notice that you have already written functions that darken and invert colors. So rather than rewriting the code, just call those functions. Make gray. What, how do you make gray? Average red, green, and blue. And then create a pixel that is the average, the average, the average, okay? Something like, um, well, I'll let you figure that out. But it's got the average value for red and that average value for green and the average value for blue. Flip horizontal. Um, okay, so that's... That's going to be a little bit tricky, but I think if I help you with rotate clockwise, you'll be able to then figure out flip horizontal on your own. I think you understand the concept of what it's supposed to do. So let me help you with rotate clockwise. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a temporary image that has the appropriate width and height. Because remember, my image is not necessarily square. It might be rectangular. So the first parameter when I create a new image is the width. And so my new image is going to have the height of the old, it's the width of my new image is going to be equal to the height of the old image. And the height of the new image is going to be the width of the old image. So to save time, I just copy pasted the code from the invert color because I, I want to do a same double for loop thing where I go through all the pixels. But I don't really want need to split out the red, green, and blues. And instead of assigning um, my pixel values to my image, I'm going to be assigning them to temp. And I can start by just flip-flopping the x's with the y's. But that's not going to do exactly what I want. Um, Okay, I think at this point I have helped you enough. I'm just going to say one more thing. You need to change y to something else. It's going to be some formula for the y, and you need to be very careful that you don't go out of bounds. You might have some sort of uh, off by one error where you have to add or subtract one or something. But I won't tell you exactly that formula, what that formula for y should be. I want you to work it out for your own, on your own. And then for flip horizontal, hmm maybe a little bit like rotate clockwise, but uh, a little bit different. So I think for, at this point you should be able to do the assignment on your own. If you have any questions or problems, let me know. Um, I'll be glad to help you. What I would really love for you to do is if you could add something else, either another button or something else to the, um, the J combo box, that calls another function in here that does something different 
than the things that I have already done. I will make a separate video that shows uh, what this does when everything's complete in just a second. But um, ideas, you could, instead of just um, darkening all the colors, darken just one of the colors, or lighten just one of the colors, or um, instead of just inverting all the colors, just invert one of the colors. Those should all be very easy things to do. But I think you can get even more imaginative than that. Um, good luck and have fun. Make sure that you ask questions.